Ze, zo is levende, prijs die Heere, halleluja, van die koning van die konings, en die Heere van die Heere, we bring praise unto Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, this morning, and we just welcome you this morning, with us at Gilland Ministries, in our studio, here in Wittfle View, uh, welcome with us, join us as we serve this morning the Lord with our praise and worship, he will minister unto us His presence as we minister unto Him our worship and our praise. It's a glorious thing to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. God is good and we are here together to experience Him. Uh, God is real and we can all have an encounter with Him. Wherever you are in your home today and wherever you are listening to this recording as well, you can have an experience, a mighty experience with, with the Lord through His Holy Spirit and the power of His presence that can meet you right where you are. So uh, tap in this morning with our praise and worship and let us worship Him in spirit and in truth. As we, as we give over to our, our worship, praise and worship team this morning to lead us, we trust God that He will touch us. Let us pray first. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we surrender this whole service unto You. We give it into your hands, Lord. Holy Spirit, come and anoint us. Come and touch our lips. Touch us in our praise and in our worship that it be in spirit and in truth. For your word says that he who worships you should worship you in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. And anoint also my lips as I minister the word of God, which has put in my heart to Kutsatarava Sakaya. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we surrender and we give to your Holy Spirit. You are our host and we welcome you. Hallelujah. We are going to give over now to Jamie and Anisha, our praise and worship team, together with the Asinda. So let them lead us in praise and worship this morning. We welcome everyone and we welcome all those on Zoom. I just want to say this, that Zoom, uh, on Zoom our uh, quality, sound quality is not where we want it yet. Uh, we have uh, aimed to sort it out on Facebook today first. And we are testing it, and if everything goes well, we'll get the same equipment to connect to our Zoom channel. And uh, so bear with us on Zoom, and um, just stick with it, try and tap in as much as you can with the praise and worship. We know that the music, especially the music sound, is not of good quality. But uh, uh, when we speak, in other words, when I minister, you'll be able to hear me properly, and I will be able to see you on the screen as well. So. Welcome. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Jamie and Nisha, thank you very much. Take it. What a privilege it is. Hallelujah. To worship God. To belong to Jesus. And times are difficult when you're in a storm. This is not what the Christianity is about, but when you're in a storm, you don't belong to Jesus. You're alone in that boat. You have to rely on people the same boat like the disciples when, when they were in the storm in the Sea of Galilee they had only each other and they were in the storm when you belong to Jesus you walk on the water and it comes into your boat that makes a different story this morning I want you to declare Jesus name's power God's power in his name because in his name there's power and there's victory shipping. Heaven's mercy is 
Was crowned with thorns, is now crowned with glory. The Savior now to wash our feet, now at His feet we melt. Sing that again. The head that once was crowned with thorns. His crown will glory now. The Savior knows to wash our feet. How let His feet be The one who wore our sins and shame. Now robe with
That's where God is, there is liberty, where His presence is, there is healing, there is peace, there is overcoming power and strength to overcome all your circumstances, all your situations. And I'm now, right now, where you are, I'm speaking life into your circumstances. I'm speaking life into your finances. I'm speaking life into your body. I'm speaking healing into your physical body. I speak healing into your emotional uh, stress. I speak healing uh, unto you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit with your healing, with your deliverance, with your provision in Jesus' name. Namasuta Lavagaskadala be touched by His power in Jesus' name. It is a privilege to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. As he has ministered unto us his presence while we were worshiping him. Hallelujah. That is our service unto him. To worship him. Hallelujah. In this place this morning. Praise his holy name. Thank you to our music team, Jamie and Nisanya Sunda. We appreciate you this morning. Glory be unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be unto the Lord Jesus Christ. As I'm going to minister this morning the Word of God, I'm going to read was from the book of First Samuel. Hallelujah. First Samuel from verse 9. And the title of my message this morning is Renewing Your Mantle Frequently. Your Little Mantle Frequently. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 1 from verse 9. One evening after supper, when they were in, uh, at Shiloh, Hannah went over to the tabernacle. Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance. She was in deep anguish and was crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven, if you will look down upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give my, me a son, then I will give him back to you and he will be yours for his entire lifetime and his hair shall never be cut. Eli noticed her mouth moving as she was praying silently and hearing no sound thought she had been drinking. Must you come here drunk, he demanded. Throw away your bottle. Oh no, sir, she replied. I'm not drunk, but I am very sad and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Please don't think that I'm just some drunken bum. In that case, Eli said, cheer up. May the Lord of Israel grant your, you your petition, whatever it is. Oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed and went happily back and began to take her meals again. The entire family was up early that next morning and went to the tabernacle to worship the Lord once more. Then they returned home to Rama. And when Elkanah slept with Hannah, the Lord remembered the petition. In the process of time, a baby boy was born to her. She named him Samuel, meaning asked of God. Because as she said, I asked the Lord for him. The next year, Elkanah and Penina and the children went on to the annual trip to the tabernacle. Without Hannah, for she told her husband, wait until the baby is weaned, then I will take him to the tabernacle and leave him there. Well, whatever you think uh, best, Elkanah agreed, may the Lord's will be done. 
so she stayed home until the baby was weaned. Then, though he was told so small, they took him to the tabernacle in Shiloh, Shiloh along with a three-year-old bull for the sacrifice and a bushel of flour and some wine. After the sacrifice, they took the child to Eli. Sir, do you remember me? And I asked him. I am the woman who stood here at that time praying to the Lord. I asked him to give me this child and he has given me my request. And now I'm giving him to the Lord for as long as he lives. So she left him there at the tabernacle for the Lord to use. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 2. Verse 18. Samuel, though only a child, was the Lord's helper and wore a little linen robe, just like a priest. Each year her mother made a little coat for him and brought it to him when she came with her husband for the sacrifice. Before they returned home, Eli would bless Elkanah and Hannah and ask God to give them another children to take the place of the one they had given to the Lord. And the Lord gave Hannah three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, Samuel grew up in the service of the Lord. Eli was now very old, but he was aware of what was going on around him. Hallelujah. Okay, just up to date. And the Lord gave Hannah three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, Samuel grew up in the service of the Lord and listened to this eight again. It was night in each year. His mother made a little coat for him. Another translation could say, his mother made a little mantle for him and brought it to him when she came with her husband for sacrifice. Hallelujah. So Hannah was the wife of Elkanah, who had two wives, of which the other wife had bore children for Elkanah, but Hannah was barren and couldn't bear children for her husband. She was however special to her husband, and when they ate, he always made sure she had a bigger or a better portion, because she had loved her so much even though the Lord didn't allow her to have children. One day, in deep anguish and bitter crying, she was praying at the tabernacle where Eli was sitting at the entrance. He thought that she was drunk and rebuked her and told her to go away. She responded that she was not drunk as he had thought, but she was just pouring out her heart before the Lord. Holy Spirit, we worship you this morning. I ask that this word will penetrate each and every heart this morning for encouragement. To be built up, to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Just have a small problem here that we're sorting out. Let me come out in the meantime. So her response was that she was not drunk, as she had thought, but she was just pouring out her heart before the Lord. Then he released a blessing. Listen to this. He released a blessing that the Lord would grant her her petition. When she and the husband came together again, the Lord remembered her and she fell pregnant. Now the, she had made a promise that she would give this child back to the Lord to serve the Lord the rest, the, for his whole life. 
And that's what that's exactly what she had done. So that's exactly what she did. After the child was weaned, she took him to Shiloh to the tabernacle, as we have read, even though he was still so small. So Samuel was still a young boy when she took him back and surrendered him back to the Lord into the hands of Eli the priest. And she also took with her a bull and a bushel of flour and some wine as a sacrifice. If we look at biblical principles in the Old Testament, there was a lot of sacrificial rituals taking place. The, 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 the hearts of people were uh, uh, sacrificial uh, deeds were showing the kind of spirit and intention that they had. After the sacrifice, she took the child to Eli the priest and left him there for the Lord to use him. She left him there for the Lord to use. So Samuel stole on their child was the Lord's helper. So for many years, Samuel was just a helper in the service of the Lord. And he wore a little linen uh, uh, robe, just like the priests. What does that mean? Samuel actually wore a robe like the priests. If I can use my own life as an illustration, I was not called to ministry right at the beginning of my salvation. But I had this desire for God, and I, and I, and I, and I can say that I wore this priestly crook, uh, uh, robe in my life ever since I started serving the Lord. I wore this robe which was a priestly one just as the priests. But that was not the mantle. It was a service which I done, had done to the Lord. And each year his mother made a little coat or a little mantle for him and brought it to him when she came with her husband to sacrifice. So every year they came back to the, to the house of the Lord that they would bring sacrifice to the Lord and then she would, in the meantime she had made a new mantle for Samuel, the son and every year as he had grown he received this mantle from his mother let me tell you something that when you are growing up spiritually the Holy Spirit will always uh, bring you new mantles as you grow up and it is called little mantles. The Bible speaks about little mantles. And as you are growing up, the calling on your life would increase. And God, let me tell you this, the Bible says that the calling of God is without repentance. And uh, in an Afrikaans translation, it actually says more something like this. The calling of God is without regret. It is an honor. The call of God is an honor. But the priests sons, Eli's sons, two sons they had no regard for the calling on, on their lives they did not reckon it holy they did not understand maybe the calling that was on their lives which came through their lineage their physical lineage because they was of the tribe of Levi they were supposed to serve in the temples and in the house of the Lord they were the one that had to do priestly service. But they were doing sin in the temple. They were doing, they were having fun, they were practicing fornication with the women that served in, with them. And the Lord was not satisfied with them. They did not have a regard for God and his service. But Samuel grew up, and as he grew up, his Mother brought him a new mantle each year. A new little bigger, little bigger mantle. If you can say it like that. And as he grew up, his mantle also got bigger.
before they returned, Eli would bless Elkanah and Hannah and ask God to give them other children to take the place of the one they had given to the Lord. Marako Shalabandi. There's nothing that you can give God that He will not give you even more. Because you will never be able to outgive God. Hannah prayed for a child and she promised to give him back to the Lord, which she did. You see, if whenever we pray God and ask Him for anything and we receive that that thing that we have asked. Let me tell you this principle. If you receive from God something with your whole, that you had prayed for with your whole heart, your whole desire. It also happened with Abraham. Abraham believed God for a son. But what did he have to do? He had to give him back to God. He had to take him onto the mountain and he had to slaughter him. I sacrificed him unto the Lord. And when the Lord saw his heart, he stopped him and said, Now I know that you would not hold back your only son that I've given you. I know that the same she did not hold back a child. And what did God do? He increased her. He gave me a, a, another three sons and, and two daughters. That's the God that we serve. If we sow a seed uh, that, you know, our first fruits, what, who, what was Samuel unto, unto Hannah? He was the first fruit. And she gave it back unto the Lord. But my, my sermon is not about giving today, but this is a principle and I want to uh, draw attention to this today. That Hannah brought her first fruit and God blessed her with five more children. What a privilege. Abraham brought Isaac back to the Lord through, through sacrifice. And what did the Lord do? He made his promise come true in Abraham's life of, the, uh, of which said that I will make you a father of many nations. So Abraham became a father of many nations. So that just shows that when we give God our first fruit and, he, and, and we put His kingdom first, that He will always give us back much more than what we have asked or prayed for. If we ask God for something, don't hold it. Don't hold it in your bosom. Always give it back to God. That's how we increase. Never try to keep anything. If your hands are closed, You'll become restricted. But when you are a giver, like that, because that's what our Father is in heaven. He's a giver, the biggest giver ever. The secret here is that what we ask or pray for will always be what God expects us to give back to Him. We see this also with Abraham and many others in the Bible, as I have explained. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the little mantle that Hannah brought to Samuel each year always, would always be a bigger one as he grew up. So Samuel grew up and every year he would grow out of the little mantle that his mother had made for him. He became so big for it, uh, it became too big for it and bigger ones had to be made for him as I've explained as we grow up spiritually we also grow out of our yesterday's mantles when we got saved we received a mantle of salvation as we grew up or grow up we received mantles of equipping with other words renewing our minds to the word of God getting washed with the water of God's word then we receive the mantles of our gifts. The Holy Spirit would give us our gifts. And the mantles of our calling. 
These are all mantles of preparation. Our mantles is our covering of God's calling and His will for our lives. It might happen, happen that sometimes we don't take up our new mantles and that older ones would be outgrown and get worn out as we outgrow it. That means that our focus in life is no more on our mantle. If we do not receive our new mantle and start to wear the new little ones which the Holy Spirit has given us, it means that we are no longer focused on our calling. And what would happen, the ones that we had would start, it would start to, 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 to be torn. If we keep it, try to keep it on, it, we would outgrow it. And it would no longer serve a, the purpose that you had it for in the past. It means that God becomes secretary and, and delay in your calling steps in. Think of that. When we are not focused on our calling and on our mantle anymore, delay steps in in our lives. God wants to prepare us for the high calling. Each one of us listening to this sermon today, to this broadcast, uh, there's a high calling on your life. Don't you realize that? Yeah, but I'm just so and so. I also used to say that. But in my inner being, in my spirit, I always knew that the, the hand of God is on my life. And I pursued the calling. I pursued the bigger mantles. Every time I, I would receive a new mantle, I would put it on. It was not always easy and uh, easy going. But the high calling of God is upon your life. Hallelujah. Eli's sons had no regard for the calling and practiced sin in God's house. Eli warned them but that, that, he did not discipline them. And you know what? I've seen this. That the calling of God would be on, on people. And they would not regard it as precious in their lives. I've seen people like that perish. I've seen even people like die before they, like that die before their time. Because they did not regard the high calling on their life which was put on them. Many preachers' sons and daughters were called for the high calling. But because of hurt in the ministry, they, they departed from the faith. They lost their calling, they lost their lives. Many do pursue it. Many also come back as the prayers of the parents kick in and stay in place and protect them. So Eli warned them, but they did not, he, he did not discipline them. You know what? God held him accountable. His two sons lost their lives on the same day. And that on that same day, Eli also lost his life. Samuel pursued his calling through his faithful service in the house of God. He became one of the most important prophets in the Bible through his faithful pursuing of his calling. He was the prophet that appointed the first king of Israel. God gave Eli and his sons a privileged position as priests. But they despised the calling and God took it from them and gave it to another. If you don't, do not adhere to the call of God in your life, God will bypass you and he would, that calling will go on to another. But you will be held accountable. You can't 
Don't just pass by without accountability. You see, every time we grow, outgrow our little mantle, there is something we have to get rid of in our lives. And that's, the, that's maybe the most important problem. Because we have to get rid of things in our lives. What? What do we have to get rid of? Carnality. Habits, certain habits. Sin, etc. Sometimes we have to start to live a disciplined life in the spirit. How do we discipline our spiritual life? Through our words. That's one way of uh, putting on a new mantle. To discipline the words that come out from your, from your mouth. Because your, your, your words creates your future. We say God is in control. Yes, He might be. But you are in control with your mouth. With your mouth you create your own, you create your own future. Yes. Our words of our mouth should change and overall change in our character, mm -hmm. countenance and being sh uh, and in our being. And that it should be evident. Growth in our spiritual projecting should show. We would have to be recognized by other people as a man or a woman of God. When they see you, they should realize this, there's something different. When you wear your mantle, you will be different. And it will be noticeable. The anointing on your lives will become evident. And we will become effective in the kingdom of God. How do we put on our mantles? By devotion, spending time in prayer with God, pursuing His Word by the renewing of the mind, being washed by His Word. And getting to know Him personally. As Samuel grew up, in the house of God with the priest Eli. Something one day happened. While he was sleeping he heard a voice. And the voice was calling his name. Samuel. Samuel. And he would get up and he went to the priest Eli. And he would ask, yes sir, did you call me? And he would say, no, I didn't call you. He would go back. And by the third time he came back and said, did you call me? Eli said, no. It was not me. Maybe it must be the Lord that is calling you. So answer him and he will speak to you. So what happened as Samuel grew up? The Lord became personal to him. He had a personal experience of the Lord speaking to him. About calling him for his purpose and his ministry. Devotion and service will bring you new mantles each year. And you will someday experience something different. Something where God is speaking to you personally about your calling. And He will encourage you to pursue the high calling. You see, while you were growing up, it was every time a little mantle. But then comes a mantle that you will wear when you are uh, 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 um, mature. There's a, there's a mature mantle that will eventually be put over, over your life. And that is to take you, and it will, that mantle will take you into your destiny. And you will wear that mantle. And it will be evident for all to see. And people will be will notice and will know that when that man of God or woman of God speaks, things happen. God is with that person. If he prays for someone, they get healed. If he speaks life, the barren will have children. Hallelujah. Lord. 
Shakashi Tulavani. Our mantle is our anointing to fulfill our calling. And as I've said, the Holy Spirit will frequently come with a new little mantle for you as you grow up spiritually. As I've seen people lost, lose their lives, and they can, you can lose your calling. If you disregard the calling of God in your life. Whenever there is repentance, God will always see that. I'm not saying that there's no time for turning back and there's no space for turning back. That's why I bring this word to you today. Maybe you feel that I've lost my calling. Maybe you feel today I've lost my mantle. Maybe today you know that there's a calling on your life, but you did not pursue it because other things in life distracted you. But the high calling of God does not have any regret. The high calling of God in your life is now. This is the day for you to take up your new little mantle and start to grow up again in the spirit. Maybe you are one that has pursued your little mantles through your life spiritually. And this is now the time for your mature mantle to be put over you. For you to go into your destiny. This might be your time. Don't get distracted. Be focused. Get back into the, into, into the focus and the, and the pursuing of the mantle and the calling of God in your life. What is that? That is perfect will. You know what? The Bible says many are called but few are chosen. Many are called but few are chosen. And we can go and see that right through the Bible. Those, there were many that was called. But not, not all of them pursued their calling. And they lost that mantle. Jacob's or, or, or Isaac's two sons is a good example. The one pursued the calling. The other one was a man, a carnal man. Esau was carnal and he did not regard his calling on his life. He actually uh, uh, swapped it for a plate of soup. Because he was the eldest. He had a calling on his life. He had, he had an inheritance. But he despised it. And he lost it. And he went to the younger brother, Jacob, who later became Israel. Get rid of things that is holding you back. The renewing of the mantle comes in seasons. Let me explain something to you. There might be something in your life that the Holy Spirit wants you to sort out in your life and to get rid of. And He would come to you like this and He would talk to you and say, My son, my daughter, let's get rid of this thing. And then you say, Yes, Lord, let's deal with it. And you go further in the new man the mantle and a new season comes and the same Principle would, would apply. The Holy Spirit would come and say, okay, well done. Let's go forward now. But this time, you, you got hurt in the meantime and there's now bitterness in your heart. Or maybe it's some kind of a habit which you uh, were, 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 were comfortable with through the, the time that you've been serving the Lord. And now the Holy Spirit says, now it's time to deal with that. Let's go forward. And you said, Lord, I'm not ready. And you are not able to deal with it. You know what happens? There you will stay. And the Holy Spirit will move on. But be of good courage. Because he, he would always come back. 
If then a season would pass by and he would come next to you again in, in another season and he would tell you, are you ready now? Let me tell you this. Even though you are not ready here and the Holy Spirit passed you by and you realize I've made a mistake. There's another principle. If you humble yourself, if you repent, and you turn from your wicked way, God will always be there. And the Holy Spirit will immediately meet you to sort it out so that you can carry on on the path of God for your life. I'm finishing up with this message. Jamie, please, thank you, son. This is a very important message for the time that we are living in. We all are called. How can I say that? Well, the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. How is it in your life today? Every one of us that got born again has got a high calling on our lives. And the Holy Spirit wants to meet you today to pursue your calling afresh so I, I want to encourage you today to pursue this calling this high calling of God in your life to take the new mantle each season that it comes to you and wear it With pride, not with pride in a negative sense. You can proudly wear your coat. You can put it on and pursue your high calling and serve as a servant. When Jesus came to the earth, he did not come as a king. He came as a servant and as a sacrifice. So our lives here on earth is also the same. We are to serve and to sacrifice. He will be the one that will crown us one day as kings and priests with him. We can also in our calling fulfill that, that, that uh, 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 position in our lives of our high calling. When you walk in your high calling, you also walk in high authority. You walk in the authority of the one who has called you. What does that mean? When, the, when you mention the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow before you. I'm not saying people will worship, that's people to worship you. No, the enemy will bow his knee. Why? Because you are functioning in the authority of your high calling. And you've got God behind you. And he will assist you. And if the enemy does not bow his knee, God will personally sort him out for you. Because he's the one who fights our battles. He's fighting for us. And when you mention that name, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. When you mention the name of Jesus, Within your high calling, you will win souls for Jesus. And souls will come into the kingdom of God. And that is our great service to, to, to bring in the harvest. Hallelujah. That is our high calling. As servants of God. So I encourage you now to make a decision today. To pursue your high calling to code for it. Get rid of everything that's holding you back. You know how to get rid of it? Because you say, but I can't, how do I get rid of it? It's a decision that you make. No matter, no matter how hard it becomes, you stay with your decision. That's how you pursue your high calling. That's how you wear your mantle. You don't go astray with every wind 
or any side path that you can take. No, you keep straight on the road of your high calling that you are pursuing. Amen. Stay within your calling. Paul said this to some of his followers. He said, one day he said, stay within the calling that you are called with. You are not to pursue another's calling. You pursue your own calling. How do you do that? By pursuing the one that you serve. You are serving God. But God will always put a leader in your life who can teach you. Eli was the teacher of Samuel. And he taught him the ways of God in the house of God. Find out who you should follow and whom you should serve. And go and be faithful to that man or woman of God. Serve them with, with perseverance. Serve them with dignity. Serve them with patience. Serve them with your whole heart. And that's how God sees your heart. Because when you serve their servants, you're actually serving God. Because they're already wearing the, the, the mature mantle. The mantle of their high calling. And you are pursuing yours. Carry on with that. And that's my encouragement this morning to each one that listen to this message. May this word of God bless you. May it penetrate your spirit being. May it burn into your mind and into your spirit and into your emotions. That you will pursue God for your high calling with a burning desire within you to serve Him with passion and to fulfill your high calling on your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for this one. And those who are listening to this message today, that they, that would be what they would be doing to pursue the high calling and let that be the same for all of us in this room as well today that we will pursue our high calling and wear our mantles little mantles as they come to us with dignity Praise the voice of God. Jamie, can we end this service with a song? Please. Let us worship Him. As we are worshiping now, get still in your heart before the Lord. And make a heart's decision. We used to say, the kind of decision that you have to take is a quality decision. Not just a New Year's uh, decision, no. A quality decision. Job says that when I make a decision, it comes to pass. That kind of decision that you make. That the decision that you make will come to pass as from this day. And your circumstances will start to change as you pursue your high calling. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Dave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the presence of my name. Say in the middle of the 
This word today and make it your own and may the Lord bless you and keep you and let his, and may his face shine upon you and let his glory be on your life as you pursue your high calling be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Amen Thank you